smart agenda. <laughs> Battling the forces of evil. The school of life. I want to keep this video as short as possible because I know you've got the attention span of a goldfish. If you want to read further into this, check the links in the description below. Now, I've been living in London my whole life. If someone was to come up to me and say, there are two Londons, I'd probably think he was high or something. But upon closer inspection, this elderly gentleman with a strong affinity for cannabis speaks the truth. What? I hear you say, shut up and listen. I respond. If you look at a map of London made by a careful cartographer, this map will have a one square mile hole near the middle. Here's where the city of London lives inside London City. Despite these two having similar names, there are massive differences. London City, that we're familiar with, has a population of 7 million, metropolitan police force, mayor of London, ethnic diversity, police brutality, etc. etc. The City of London, also known as the City of London Corporation, has a population of 7,000. Its own police force and the fact that it exists outside many of the laws and democratic controls which govern the rest of the United Kingdom, its own flag and crest, its own mayor called the Right Honourable Mayor of London. The right not to disclose their assets and dealings. The Queen having to seek permission before entering. A character called the Remembrancer who protects their interests in Parliament. It being a tax haven or kind of like an offshore account in its own right. And most of the voting rights in the area are for businesses. So it's kind of like a plutocracy governed by the rich. So how did this happen? Well, long time ago the Romans came to the UK, set up a trading post, did their thing and built a wall to protect what they done. Time passed, they left, but the wall remained and the people inside kept prospering till the city became more and more powerful. Then came William the Conqueror, also known as William the B I am not making this up. He found it harder to rule over these guys, so he made a deal. He would agree to recognize the rights and privileges they were used to and in return they had to recognize him as king. Of course he left, time went on and this privilege continued and has survived since then. Many rulers saw how powerful it was becoming so they built a new capital city, called it Westminster in the efforts to suck power away from it. As centuries passed Westminster grew and merged with nearby towns becoming bigger and eventually merging with the city of London. But despite all their efforts, it still remained separate. Anyway, like many things, you can see that it started off sincere, but as time went on, its goals have become somewhat warped and more in the favor of corporations. Now it's kind of like an offshore state, a secret power which controls the network of tax havens housed inside UK's crown dependencies and overseas territories. You'll have to read further if you don't get this. In other words, it does some shady stuff within London and rulers can't touch them. What's more interesting is how a non-democratic, tax-avoiding, discriminatory, elitist place with its own set of rules has been allowed to thrive amongst us and we have no clue, while our leaders bleed taxes from the poor, enforce democracy and debatable ideals on unwilling nations while this embarrassment lies in our midst. Let's get back to watching football, playing Pokemon or following whatever celebrities are wearing. <laughs> Remember, buy, watch and hate what you don't understand. But never question the system. Goodbye.